The movie commences with a space shuttle belonging to the Life Foundation crashing in East Malaysia. Medics promptly respond, rescuing the lone survivor, astronaut J.J. Jameson III, Chris O'Hara. As Jameson is transported in an ambulance, a mysterious entity attached to him springs to life, attacking the occupants and causing the vehicle to overturn. Emerging from the wreckage, EMT Michelle Lee becomes the unwitting host for the alien entity, known as the Symbiote. Meanwhile, in San Francisco, we meet Eddie Brock, Tom Hardy, a reporter living with his fiancée, lawyer, and Wayne Michelle Williams, and is slated to represent the Life Foundation and its CEO, Carlton Drake, Riz Ahmed. Eddie, renowned for his TV news show The Eddie Brock Report, specializes in investigative journalism. Assigned to interview Drake by his boss, Ron C. Fast Jones, Eddie is cautioned against probing too deeply into Drake's work and echoes the sentiment, aware of Eddie's penchant for impulsivity, which led to his departure from New York. Upon discovering an email on Anne's computer revealing three confirmed deaths linked to the shuttle crash, Eddie disregards orders and confronts Drake during the interview. Deviating from the script, he questions Drake about the deaths and holds him accountable. Drake abruptly ends the interview, resulting in Eddie's termination by his boss, and two, loses her job and decides to end her relationship with Eddie. Back in Malaysia, the EMT wanders into a local market and starts to eat an eel. The vendor chastises her for it, so the symbiote forms a blade around her arm, and she slits the vendor's throat. Nearby onlookers try to attack her in retribution, but the symbiote releases quills that kills everyone around her. The EMT then walks to an elderly woman, Vicky Yang, and the symbiote releases the EMT, who is now dead, and latches onto the old woman. Six months later, Drake is continuing his research into symbiotes by having tests run on homeless people. He speaks to one subject named Isaac, Jared Bankins, to make it seem like he is taking on some kind of groundbreaking task for mankind. Drake releases a symbiote into the room with Isaac and lets the entity overtake his body. He seems fine for a while until he begins convulsing, and the symbiote leaves Isaac's now dead body, having devoured his organs. In San Francisco, Eddie is now jobless and alone, living in a small seedy apartment. He goes to a nearby shop where he is acquainted with the clerk, Mrs. Chin, Peggy Liu, but Eddie sees that she is constantly getting robbed of her money by a thug, Sam Medina, and he is unable to do anything about it. Eddie is then approached by Dr. Dora Skirth, Jenny Slate, a scientist from the Life Foundation who is appalled by Drake's experiments on humans. She wants Eddie's help in exposing Drake, but he refuses to go along because he doesn't care about what happens to mankind anymore. Eddie goes to Anne's apartment to visit her, only to find her coming back from a date with her new boyfriend, Dr. Dan Lewis, Reed Scott. Once they are alone, Eddie admits to, and that he misses her, and that he blames Drake for what happened to him, but and tells him that it's his own fault that he has hit rock bottom. Eddie later calls Skirth to join in on her mission. Skirth brings Eddie to the Life Foundation's headquarters and sneaks him in. Eddie takes pictures of the gruesome displays of the symbiote's victims. He recognizes one of the living ones as Maria, Melora Walters, a homeless woman that Eddie is friendly with. He tries to break her out of her cell, only for Maria to attack him. The symbiote in her body then latches itself onto Eddie, and he runs out. Security guards chase Eddie, and he now appears to have enhanced strength and agility, allowing him to escape. Drake and his people find Maria's body and know that there is a symbiote specimen on the loose. Drake gets Skirth to admit that Eddie was involved, and he leaves her inside a cell to be killed by another symbiote. Drake then sends a team of mercenaries led by Roland Treese, Scott Hayes, to go after Eddie. Eddie starts to experience bizarre symptoms. He has an appetite for weird food choices, among them are frozen tater tots and rotten meat, and he feels like he has a fever. He also starts to hear a low, growling voice speaking to him. He finds and and Dan on a date where he shows off how messed up he is while also going through other people's food, and then sitting in a lobster tank to eat live lobsters. And and Dan figure they have to help Eddie. Dan does an MRI test on Eddie, but the frequency from the test causes a painful distortion in Eddie's head. Back home, Eddie is once again in pain when his neighbor plays his music too loud. Eddie goes to tell him to turn it down, and is scoffed at until the symbiote mutates Eddie's face into a monstrous form, and the neighbor promptly agrees. Moments later, Treese and his goons break into Eddie's home to capture him. 
Eddie tries to surrender, but the symbiote has other plans. As the mercs attack, Eddie finds himself fighting them off involuntarily with the help of the symbiote. Treese records this to show off to Drake, who is amazed that Eddie is a fitting match for the symbiote. Eddie then flees his apartment as more mercs start to show up. Eddie is chased through the city as he finds a motorcycle to ride. The symbiote helps him take out the goons and also maneuver through the streets with ease, until Tree slams into Eddie with his car. As he approaches Eddie, the symbiote overtakes Eddie's whole body, transforming him into Venom. Before Venom can kill Treese, another merc shoots at him. Venom bites his head off and then retreats. Eddie finds himself near a lighthouse where his bones are miraculously healed. Venom, what the symbiote calls itself, himself, speaks to Eddie and says he is a great host, though Eddie is mortified at seeing a man's head get bitten off. Venom tells Eddie that if he wants to survive, he need only comply. As Venom, Eddie climbs to the top of his former workplace to deliver evidence of Drake's crimes to his old boss. He nearly falls off the roof when a plane passes overhead and its frequency disrupts the symbiote, but Venom manages to catch Eddie before he hits the ground. After leaving the evidence, Eddie tries to leave, only for the mercs to try and get him once more. Venom fights them off before retreating. Eddie and Anne find each other after she goes by his apartment and sees that it's a crime scene, and she brings him to Dan's office for more help. She knows something is wrong with Eddie. Venom tells Eddie to talk to and as Venom has taken a liking to her. Eddie apologizes for his screw-ups, though, and tells him it's not the time. Dan runs another test on Eddie and determines that the symbiote is a parasite, which Venom does not like to be called. After Dan tells Eddie that he and the symbiote are essentially draining each other of life, and turns on a high frequency that causes the symbiote to pull off of Eddie's body. Venom escapes through the vents after Eddie leaves, and he latches himself onto a small dog. Treese and his men then finally get Eddie and bring him to Drake. Meanwhile, the elderly woman from earlier goes to an airport and finds a small girl to use as a new symbiote host. The girl makes her way to San Francisco and finds Drake and the symbiote then takes over Drake's body. Drake interrogates Eddie over the whereabouts of the symbiote. The symbiote and Drake forms around his body, naming itself Riot. Eddie learns that Drake's plan is to head back into space and find more symbiotes to bring back to Earth for them to use humans as hosts, and finds the dog that is hosting Venom, and she then heads to the Life Foundation as she now hosts Venom, making her she Venom, and helps break Eddie free and also bites off Treese's head, which horrifies her, and she transfers Venom back to Eddie through a kiss. No.